Hi, I'm Roger Montgomery from rogermontgomery.com and welcome to this series of reporting season videos. Uh, we haven't got a name for them yet, so if you, you come up with a suggestion, I'd be delighted to hear it. Uh, click on the comments button at the bottom of this video and the bottom of this post, uh, and by all means, I'm, I'm interested in all your suggestions. This is also a really nice way to, uh, to present some material through the reporting season to you. It's nice to be able to speak with you uh, directly. Um, so the intention is to uh, to examine the results of some big name companies, to examine the results of some smaller companies that we've been watching closely over the last year. Uh, and where we see something unusual or something you should be interested in, uh, we'll do our best to put a short video together uh, so that you can see what we're thinking at the moment. Today what I'd like to do is talk to you about West Farmers and Woolworths. And the reality is uh, that both of these companies seem to be doing a very good job. West Farmers, as many of you would know, reported their la latest quarter, their fourth quarter results uh, for sales, uh, and, uh, and it was an impressive result. But the market didn't seem to like it. The market is very focused on this market share business. The stock market is interested in knowing how much market share West Farmers is gaining from its rival Woolworths. And the results show because sales growth is faster for West Farmers than it is for, uh, for Woolworths, that they're gaining market share. But if investing was all about market share, well, we could all just run out and buy Qantas because Qantas has 65% of the domestic air, air transport um, or air travel market share. And clearly that wouldn't be a sensible decision. So what should we make of all this market share? Well, I think what we should be doing is focusing longer term, not on the latest results. The stock market's not doing that. The stock market is focusing on the latest results. And in fact, the stock market uh, fell 4% uh, fell 4% when uh, the results, West Farmers' latest quarterly sales result numbers came out. I think this frustrated CEO Richard Goiter and in the analyst briefing, Richard Goiter made a point through a rhetorical question when he said, he said, well, if our company isn't meeting your expectations, talking to the analysts, who's wrong? the company or the analysts, and it's a fair point. Again, I'm not interested in short-term results and I don't think you should be as well. We should be thinking about what this company is going to be worth in three, five, 10, 15, 20 years. West Farmers comparable store sales growth has been fantastic. In fact, average growth over the last five quarters has been about 5.9%. While well, it was only 2.72% for Woolworths. Remember though that West Farmers are coming off a very low base and there's plenty of low hanging fruit for it to improve its sales. More interesting though is that in the last quarter sales growth for Coles was 5.2% while it was still a respectable 4% for Woolworths. And that's a big difference from four quarters ago, this time last year, when Coles was growing at 4.2% and Woolies was growing at just 1.8%. The growth sales, the sales growth gap uh, is definitely narrowing. And all this is happening despite significant deflation uh, at Coles and Woolworths. Remember, Coles is celebrating the first birthday of their down, down prices, a down promotion. As an aside, we have to remember that Coles says it's saved $880 million for households in the past 12 months. It sounds impressive, but it's just $40 per person in Australia. And I suspect that you've spent more than $40 extra over the last year in, for example, petrol. The attempt by Coles at altruism needs to be measured against the fact that only now West Farmers is resetting its prices at Bunnings. So while it's saving you money at Coles, it's probably been charging a little bit more than it needed to over at Bunnings. And why is it resetting prices now? Well, of course, Woolies is about to open their first big box hardware store in September. And you need to remember that some of these savings are also coming uh, from lower prices being squeezed out of suppliers. And suppliers are Australians just like consumers. So bear that in mind. So let's talk about the quality of these two companies and whether there's any value at the moment in either of them. In 2010, Woolworths generated $35 billion in sales of equity of $3.7 billion, the contributed equity, that which has been contributed by shareholders, and $2.7 billion of debt. In the same period, 2010, Coles generated $25 billion of sales, $10 billion less than Woolworths. And sure, there are other businesses within the West Farmers Group. The company, however, employed $22 billion of contributed equity and $5.3 billion of debt. So you tell me which one you think is the superior economic performer. The result is that returns on equity um, of 9% 
9% to 11% are likely for the next couple of years for West Farmers compared to 25 to 27% for Woolworths. Now I appreciate that Woolworths will have some serious capex, uh, capital expenditure associated with rolling out the new hardware concept, but remember the success of Bunnings has been in the absence of a serious competitor and a long and drawn out war for the hearts and minds of a nation of do-it-yourselfers. So up until now, Bunnings has had the world to themselves. That's going to change going forward. The distraction of a new player in the warehouse space could prove just to be a little bit too much for a board who currently have the luxury of only worrying about coals and a bid for burrup fertiliser. For many years, since 2007 in fact, Woolley's share price has tracked sideways and many long-term investors have grown impatient. But the frustration is of their own making. You see, in 2007, the share price had raced way ahead of intrinsic value. And it's only now, four years later, that my estimate of intrinsic value for Woolworths finally caught up. Woolworths' intrinsic value has risen by almost 28% a year over the last 10 years. And I expect it will continue to grow by about 11% annually over the next few years. West Farmers' intrinsic value has grown by only 3% per annum over the last decade, and that's starting to improve, and in fact, the next few years, intrinsic value could grow by more than 20%. The problem is that for West Farmers, the share price is way above its intrinsic value, even above where I think intrinsic value will be in 2013 and 2014. Woolies, however, is trading now at a discount to its intrinsic value. In terms of economic performance, Woolies is the superior business. And if your ethical filters allow you to buy supermarkets, I also believe that over many years, Woolworths has a better chance of superior performance as an investment than West Farmers. Full year results for West Farmers are expected on August 18 and for Woolies on August 25. By the way, thank you for your amazing comments and insights. I know there are thousands and thousands of investors who visit the Insights blog who appreciate all the comments, all the insights uh, that you're providing. Keep it up. Thank you very much for your support and I'll see you very soon.